Can women really have it all? This was one of the questions asked at the 2012 WE Symposium. I spoke at the inaugural event three years ago and was impressed by this year's lineup. Here is some power advice from four of our dynamic speakers. Serial entrepreneur Amelia Antonetti shares her view on the term balance. So I the word balance is created by a man, so stop <laughs> making that as a objective because balance is stagnant. If you actually look up the word, that's what it means. None of us are aspiring to be stagnant. So the pr proper analogy to use is ebb and flow, created by Mother Nature, ebb and flow. And your life is going to go back and forth between the different buckets that you create for yourself. As long as you don't touch down for a long period of time, you are in balance. So I think a lot of times we put this really unrealistic expectation on ourselves of what our life should look like when we're partners and mothers and career people and, and business owners and all of this stuff. We put these, these visions in our head that unless you actually talk to somebody who's a little bit ahead of you who actually does, I have a teenager and I've taught, I've got an 18 year old son and a five year old daughter. Um, <clears throat> I've had up to 11 businesses at one time now. My business partner, I run several different houses at the same time. Um, and we are also investors and stuff. So we got a lot of moving parts. Um, and I had to really start really redefining some of the definitions that were out there and then really doing a check and balance to going, does that even make sense for me? So I am not the kind of mom that I read about in, you know, with the pearls and the vacuum and the cookies and all that. So that's not the kind of mom I am. And I don't want to be. Um, and when I started, I started my first business at 17 and I sold it at 19. I became a mom um, when I was in my very early 20s. And I had to really get comfortable with saying, I'm not that kind of mom. Because in the PTA, they'd be like, oh, weren't you one of those like working kind of things? But you have a hobby, right? I'm like, yeah, I have a $57 million hobby. <laughs> um, so, you know, and even after I sold my first company, and I, you know, I was one of the green pioneers, and I'm here in Forbes magazine, they're like, oh, you know, this girl started this company out of her garage, and she took it, you know, to 150 million dollars, and it was she got lucky. And I'm like, you know what? If I was a man, you'd never say I got lucky. You don't get lucky at 150. <laughs> the first thing is to really get comfortable with what you want and what that's going to look like. And it doesn't have to look like any of the pictures that we grew up with. So what I tell you when you hear this word balance and who you're going to be and what it's going to look like, make your own pictures and push back, because if it works for you, you know what, you got my vote. <laughs> Jay Brand Jean co-founder Susie Crippen talks about the value of intention and focus. When I put that first sample on, I knew I had created something that I saw in my head I visually saw it in my head. I had no design experience. I cannot draw. Um, you know, it was literally, it was like the best fluke in the whole wide world for everybody. Um, when I was 34 years old, I was a waitress. And I was a waitress for a good portion of my life. All the years I lived in New York, I was a waitress. Um, and um, when I was 44, I was worth, a, you know, several million dollars. So you can, you can literally change things up. Um, but you have to make choices. You have to make strong choices. You have to take risks. So I decided, or I chose, um, once that sample was on, I just said, I'm creating a gene empire. I didn't know how to do it. I had never been in business before. I read every single book I could get my hands on, and I became absolutely mono-focused. I didn't do anything else except work on my business. I didn't show up for birthday parties. I didn't go away for weekends. I didn't do anything. I was 100% focused on my goal. I used to be wardrobe stylist, so W Magazine invited me to this luncheon. And I wasn't even fancy. I did like frozen craft lasagna commercials. That's the kind of commercials I did. That's the kind of work I did. So, which is a great job, but it wasn't fancy. So I was invited to this luncheon, and my partner at the time, Jeff, said, what, what, what do you mean you're going to a luncheon? We have to go downtown. I was like, uh-uh-uh. I'm going to that luncheon, and I'm going to meet a stylist at that luncheon who is going to put our jeans on her client. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> go to the luncheon, 
sit down, start talking to this girl who's next to me. So, what kind of work do you do? And I kind of plunged in. I was like, I do commercials. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh, I work with Motley Crue, and I do this, and I do that. She was reeling off this thing. And she said, so what are you working on now? And I said, well, I just started a jean company. And, and she said, are those your jeans that you're wearing? And I said, yes. And she said, I would notice those the minute you walked in the door. She said, I represent Angelina, Angelina Jolie, and she would love those. Can I get some? <laughs> <laughs> a year later, my business partner called me and said, you have to come over here immediately. So I thought he was dying, so I ran to his house. <laughs> he had six magazines, OK, In Style, People, Us, all opened up on his day bed. And it was Angelina Jolie walking out of a toy store in Malibu in every single magazine, and she was wearing our jeans. And the next show we did, I had all these people running to our booth saying, are you that, are you that Angelina Jolie brand? And I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> so, you know, Monica and I have talked a lot about visualization and creating what you want, and then going after that specific thing. But that literally, put us on the map because a year before that, I had gone to that luncheon with an intention. I'm very intentional about everything I do. People think I'm crazy. People are like, oh, whatever, California. I'm like, hey, works for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it and crazy is OK. Crazy is OK. <laughs> and you know, Monica's book, is it talks about that. It talks about how you can create what you want by simply thinking about it and then taking action towards that goal. Award-winning journalist Kimberly Weisel gives us a playbook on mentoring. Conversation with this woman and says, and they talk about her business and this, you know, mentory type person says, okay, you need to do X, Y, and Z. I'm, that's it. So this entrepreneur goes, she does X, Y, and Z. And the would-be mentor is like, oh, she can actually execute. You need to do D, E, and F. She goes back, she does it. After consistently showing her that she could execute, that her advice was going to be taken seriously and acted upon, she eventually got this woman on her board. She's the only person who has ever got her on her board. But the part about it that I think applies to, to everyone is something that Amy Millman calls show me the movie, right? In that if you go up to someone and say, I want you to be my mentor, they're gonna like run away screaming, right? But if you have a specific problem with your business, and you know there's a specific person who can help you with it, and you can devise a way to meet them or a way to have coffee with them, and explain to them and say, "Look, you know, I've got this one thing. It's really tough. You've been through this. What do you have to say? To, you know, is there anything you'd say to me?" And then you come back to them and you've done it. And then a couple months later, you do the same thing, and you've taken their advice and you've done it. Very slowly, you're getting them vested in the success of your company. And you've never gone up to them and said, would you be my mentor? But that is in effect, if you continue to get along with them and if you continue to take their advice and show that you can use it, you will start to surround yourself with people who in effect are your mentor. Fashion and beauty expert Mary Alice Stevenson weighs in on whether women can truly have it all. You know what? God, it's so much fun to try to have it all. Yeah on a positive note. Like this is a really exciting time that we can try to balance it all. It, it is one hell of a ride and there's good days and there's bad days. But I know that anything that I want to do in my life, I'm gonna try. And guess what? My son is gonna be better for it because his mommy thinks big. It's also easy to have it all if you have money. I mean, you know, I'm a single mom. So I have worked my butt off, but I have to also pay for not only my son, my nanny, my driver, when my mom comes in to help me when I go away, as I was in in Chicago this week. It, ta it really does take a huge group of people, and I have, to keep, I have to keep funding having it all. And that's exhausting. So I see a lot of women that seem to have it all, but they have someone else funding it all. And God bless them. I could use some help, too, if there's any medicine. <laughs> what vision do you have for your life? What steps are you taking today to move you closer to that vision? Stay focused, and you will reach your goal. The power is in your hands.